Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be updating from Ethos 1.1 to 1.2. So this video is something that I've been asked about quite a bit and due to illness and all that sort of stuff I haven't really been able to focus on getting something done. But now we're going to update from Ethos 1.1 to 1.2. Now there is a little prerequisite with this, we need to be on at least version 1.1.4 to be able to do this. So if you're on an older version of EFOS, I'd recommend first checking out my video to get onto EFOS version 1.1. Uh, I'll put a link in the corner and also in the video description. But once you're at least at version 1.1.4, we can continue with this. So there's quite a few differences with 1.2. We've got a new tool that we can use to update the firmware in the future, but also we need to update our bootloader. So that's the first thing that we're gonna do. So first let's head into our internet browser and we're gonna to go to the EFOS feedback community on GitHub and let's go to the latest release. So at this point in time, the latest release is 1.2.8. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install that. So the first thing that we need to do is download the bootloader file for the version that we want to use. So you download this specific to your transmitter. So I will be downloading the X20S bootloader, but likewise, if you have an X20, X18, X12, X10, etc., download the appropriate file for your transmitter. So I'm gonna download that file, the X20S bootloader, and I'm just gonna stick it on my desktop for the minute. And also what I'm gonna do while I'm here is download the EFOS suite. So the EXE file is for Windows, the DMG file is Apple, I believe. So download whichever EFOS suite that you want, and we'll install that in a sec too. Okay, so the files have downloaded, so let me just hide that for a minute, and you can see I've got them on my desktop here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is actually install the new bootloader. So what we need to do is head over to our transmitter. Uh, we're gonna push the enter button and turn it on to enter bootloader mode. Now plug in your USB cable. And a, like usual, we have USB plugged on our transmitter. So let's go into Windows Explorer. And all we're doing at the moment is copying the, um, the bootloader file that we've just downloaded onto our SD card. So you can see I've named mine X20S SD, and I also have X20S, which is the flash drive. Inside the SD card, I have a firmware folder, transmitters, and I'm gonna create a new folder in here, and I'm gonna call it X20S bootloader. And now what I'm gonna do is open up this zip file. And inside here we have our bootloader.frsk file. And what I'm gonna do is just copy that into this bootloader file. So I'm just, if you're not confident with computers, I'm literally just clicking the left mouse button and holding it, dragging it in, and then I'll let go so that it copies over into that bootloader folder. So now I have the bootloader file copied onto the radio. The first thing I'm gonna do before we actually do any changes is make a backup of the current system just in case we need to go back. So we can close this zip file down and all I'm gonna do is create a folder and I'm gonna call it X20S Backup. And I will give it today's date just so that we have a record. So let's open up this folder here and I'm just gonna drag it over. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna copy across. If we go to the SD card, there's radio.bin file and then there is models folder. So I'm gonna drag those across and that has backed up all our models. Now, one other thing that I'm gonna back up is inside bitmaps, there is a user folder. This is where your model images are stored. This has actually changed on 1.2, it's in a different place. So all I'm gonna do is just back this up for a minute. So I'll create a new folder and call it bitmaps. It, to create a new folder, you just right click, go to new and then folder. Uh, so let's enter bitmaps and then let's copy this user across 
and then we just have a backup of that ready to go. Right, once this is all copied across, we've, we've backed up everything on our radio. If you've created your own custom sound files, you should have a copy of that on your computer already, so there's no real need to back any of that up, but you can just back up this whole lot if you really want to. But you should be safe just doing the radios and models. Okay, so let's close this down. And what we're gonna do is eject our USB device. So safely remove, and then safely remove the X20. And now you can unplug the USB cable. Okay, so now we're gonna continue on the transmitter. So first let's power off to get out a bootloader and power on the transmitter. So I'm just gonna skip these warnings and we're gonna head into the system menu. So first we need to check the info to make sure that we're on at least 1.1.4, which is actually the last version of 1.1. So if you're not on 1.1.4, you will need to update to that. So next what we're gonna do is head into file manager and we're gonna go down and look for that folder that we created earlier. So mine was in firmware and transmitters and then I created the X20S bootloader. So in there we have our bootloader.frsk file. So just click on that and we're gonna click flash bootloader. So this will actually flash the bootloader. This might take some time. Actually not, pretty quick. Okay, so we'll close that. And what we're gonna do is exit back out and power off the radio. And if we press the enter button, we can see that we're now on version 1.2.8 bootloader. So we're right up to date with the bootloader. So just power the transmitter off. And now what we're gonna do is install EFOS Suite. So back to our desktop, we just run this file. If you get a Windows protected don't run box. And what we're gonna do is click on run anyway. And this will actually let us install EFOS. So we will get another pop-up box, which we just need to choose yes. And finally, we get the installer. So we'll agree, choose which drive we're gonna save it on. So I'll stick it on my D drive. And then we'll just let this install and I'll come back once we're ready to run. So that's finished installing. So we're gonna leave this ticked so we can just run EFOS Suite. Right, so just some first use guide that you need to use bootloader 1.2.0 or newer. We are okay with that, we're on 1.2.8. So what we're gonna do is press the enter button and power on the radio so we're in bootloader mode. And then what we'll do is plug the USB in and hopefully EFOS suite will actually say that. So yep, yeah, we've got our radio, so let's let's click on the radio. Okay, so this is our radio screen. So we can see the current version of our firmware up here, which is saying is out of date. We've got our SD card and flash drives. We've got the newer versions of the firmware that we can install and we can have the audio language here. So let's have a look at what the detail says. Is this just the release notes? Yep, so clicking the info is just the release notes but that's got all the previous releases. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna choose our uh, release 1.2.8, select the language we want, and we can choose whether just to install the bitmaps, audio, firmware, or all of it. So let's do all of it, shall we? So let's click the button and let it do its thing. We'll come back once this is finished. And there we go, it's all done. This has actually been really nice and simple to use. So it's much easier than downloading everything from GitHub. So let's just click the, the close button. And it did actually update these as it went along. So when it updated the bitmaps, it popped up with up to date, the same with the audio. And it has actually kept flex on there. That was one thing I wasn't sure about, whether it would default to EU or if it kept the flex, but it's actually kept the same firmware, which is really, really nice. So there we go, that's how you update EFOS. So, Going forward, this is a much, much simpler task. I'll have a dive into EFOS Suite and we'll, I'll do a video specifically on that. This is really just to get you up to date onto the new version. And as you can see, updating in the future 
should be really, really simple. The only problem may be with bootloaders, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But hopefully it'll be just as easy as doing this update. One sec, I forgot something. So um, let's have a look on our transmitter. Right, so I'm gonna just pop into EFOS and I'm gonna choose a model that I know should have a model image and it's missing. Okay, so if you have this, it's because the model images have moved. So what we're gonna do is pop back into bootloader mode and then we'll plug back in our USB. Now this is really silly because I actually mentioned this at the beginning of the video when we we're doing our backup. So let me just close EFOS Suite and we will open up a file explorer and we'll jump back into our SD card. So if we go into bitmaps, we have this user folder. And what we need to do is just rename this to models. So if you right click on it and go rename and call it models. Now, if we pop back to the transmitter, all our images should be there again. There we go. Everything's back to normal. <laughs> so now I can end the video. So hopefully you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. It will help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to get EFOS version 1.2 on their transmitters too. Thank you very much for watching guys. See you on the next one. Fly your models like you stole them.